Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. So hello, welcome back. So today we're going to start talking about arrays. So this is chapter 6, and we're going to be talking about arrays. But we're going to start off this, like every chapter so far, we'll start with C. So we're going to be looking at arrays in C, in the C programming language. A number of things to cover um, in, when it comes to arrays in C. And so much, in fact, that we're not going to be able to get through a whole lot of it because, again, we're just taking a look at it and we're not really trying to learn it too well if you don't know it. But at least if you don't know it, you should still walk away feeling like you have a glimpse of it. All right. So let's jump in. Now, the first thing to know is that arrays in C is built into the language. Now, as we start going through it, you're going to see as how, even though I said arrays in C, is, I said arrays are built into C, we can actually be started using it more um, in a, with pointers than anything else. And the reason why is because C have this idea of arrays and pointers and um, pointers is what scared a lot of people when it comes to C and learning about C or programming in C and you cannot be a good C programmer without being very 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 comfortable with pointers and the thing that makes it even crazier is that C collapses arrays into pointer and that's not going to make a lot of sense now until I show you an example some examples and what that basically means is that for all intents and purposes C just treats arrays and pointers like they're the same, but in a way they're not. I'm going to show you how they're different. There's something you can do with an array that you really can't do with a pointer, but once you have an array, after that you can treat it like a pointer, and you will pretty much have to treat it like a pointer, especially if you want to pass it to function. And again, I'll show you. That's where the collapsing into a pointer is going to be very, very apparent to you. And so arrays in C are very low level, and they're low level for the fact that though they sort of behave like pointers, and pointers can behave like arrays. You're going to use the array notation on pointers. Again, we're going to look at some um, examples of that. So in this exploration, we're going to look at arrays in C, and then we can do some basic operations. And as we move on to other languages, you're going to see the other languages enrich how you use arrays, make it more built-in things, protect you from some of the problems that you would run into, otherwise run into in C. And so it's the other languages have much better support for for um, array operations and give you some nice things that people tend to want to do um, with arrays. Uh, when we do talk about pointers and um, you know, um, across the languages and see which ones support it or why they would or wouldn't support it. You see, it's a point that do have, um, and being able to manipulate memory objects have a very important, um, you know, uh, what's I say, role in being able to write low level system programming language and operating systems. So if your language doesn't allow you to do that, there's no need for it to be able to give you the kind of access to memory. All right. So let's go on. Um, like I said, this is going to be a lot to digest and, um, because we're just comparing things, I'm going to still try to spend a little bit of time, but we can't spend too much time. This video already as it is, is going to be very long. And so I'm trying to go slow in this video. All right. So some of the things we're going to look at here is how you declare initialize an array. And then we can see if you can print it, if there's any built-in support for printing it. Here's a tip. No. Um, but we're going to still be able to print out elements of our array. And then we can do some calculation, calculating the length of it. And here's where you're going to see again that if you have an array, you can figure out the length of it. But if you have a pointer, good luck. Um, and then we can try and do some basic operations like, you know, um, basis usage, which is being able to, if I have an array, how can I put things in it? How can I get things out? And an array wouldn't be any good if you couldn't iterate over it um, very easily. And things like, can we split an array in two? Um, no. Can we join them or growing? Sort of. Um, and in terms of restriction, there's probably a whole lot I could come up with here because there's so many pitfalls in C in terms of even dealing with memory and so on that I'm not even going to worry listing any kind of restriction that we're going to place on ourselves because at this point, it, it, we wouldn't be able to do use arrays if we put some restrictions in. When it comes to declaring, um, so here um, you're saying, hey, I have an array of this size, and you know, um, the first way you can do that is by saying the type, and then give an identifier, and then like the size. And so that looks pretty much like any other array declaration that you might see in any other language, except for whether you reverse the type and the identifier. That's it, neither here nor there. Second way is to just say I have a type, and then I have a pointer to that type. And this is just basically says that um, what I'm going to be able to store in this identifier is the memory location for some bytes. And then based on the type, we can be able to treat those bytes in a certain way. And I'm trying to use some graphic to try and bring this idea out. But this is where C, arrays, and um, pointers sort of get mangled. In terms of initialization, I can say that when I have an array of a certain type, I'm going to say what the elements are for it. Now, if you remember what I talked about in C and C++, is that when you declare variables, they really do not get initialized. So in Go and other language, when you say, you know, I have an integer variable, um, it gets zeroed out or it gets its default value, whatever is appropriate for that type. So Boolean would be false, integers would be zero, strings would be empty, and so on, right? 
Um, in C, it's whatever is at that memory location already, and they don't spend time clearing it out for you. Um, but here, when you specify the elements of an array, you can say, I have an array, let's say, of size 5. I'm going to see examples, right? So I'm just telling you what I'm going to show you and then show it to you. And then we can, even if we, or we specify a size of, let's say, 10, and we only, um, or size is 10, but we only list out five things to put in that array, C is going to zero out the rest of the array for us. So this is one of the places that C will take care of that for you. But otherwise, in the first case, when a declaration, when you do, I have an array of, let's say, 10, and then you go look at it, it's whatever it's, it is. Um, then identifier, um, the second one on the initialization. Um, here, I'm going to leave out the size, just say what my elements are, and then basically ask C to calculate the size for us. And we've seen this in Go, all right? So um, nothing new there, and even something like uh, other language have this too. All right, and then the third thing is basically back to our idea of a pointer. And this is how we know when we can initialize our pointer, not just saying that we declare the pointer, but we're actually going to give it a value. And so we say, hey, go into memory and get look for a block of mem um, free space and return the address of where this free space is. And note what I just said, go into memory, look where there's a block of or a set of bytes that matches the amount that I want, the minimum, at least minimum that I want. So if I say, go find 16 bytes, go into memory, look up someplace where there's at least 16 bytes and return that, that address to me. That's all it's doing, is returning the address of where those 16 bytes start. And from there on, you have to manage it. And we're gonna see this just in our code example. And of course you have to free it. So what Malik does is this is dynamic memory allocation. At runtime, it allows you to ask the computer to go find some free memory and tell you where it is. And then you're going to take care of using it however you want. And then you're going to say when you want to free it. This is different from languages like Go and Java, which have memory managers, um, you know, building garbage collectors built into to the language. Whereas when you finish using something, they're pretty much walking around behind you and saying, oh, I think you finished using it now. I'm going to clean it up for you. Um, C does not have that. C++ does not have that. Okay. And these are the sort of things that leads to all sorts of headache. Now, either approach, whether you have an automatic garbage collector or not, um, has pros and cons. So we're not going to spend time trying to argue that issue here. Plenty of time to do that. All right, so let's look at this memory allocation that I'm talking about. So let's say um, in the middle of the screen there, I have my memory, right? And, you know, it's just all, some of it is used, some of it is unused, um, based on whatever the program is doing, um, or whatever the operating system see fit to allocate memory. And so the unused memories, those little square boxes that are gray, um, those are the unused ones. And they're scattered also throughout my memory, uh, my all my available memory. And so these are the different offset on the left of memory, uh, so the address. So, so the first byte in memory is going to be at memory location zero, and the next byte is going to be memory location one, blah, 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 blah. And so in that first row, my last byte in the first row is really memory location 15. And then in the next row, the very first byte is going to be memory location 16. So what I'm showing in that address column on the left is the two ways you can address your memory. I have a decimal value you know, like zero, for example, and then I have its hexadecimal representation. If you don't know about number and scheme, well, now is not the time to really learn it. You wouldn't be able to program in C and low level programming if you don't know. I'm just sort of making it simple here. And so 16, the num decimal number 16 is the hexadecimal number 10 or one zero really in, um, in hexadecimal. And so that's why hexadecimal has certain nice capabilities um, uh, what I say, features in that one, it allows you to represent very, very large decimal number with just a few characters. And so something like 32 is very easy. It's just two zero and so on, blah, 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 blah. All right. So those are my, the addresses I'm showing you for the memory location for the very first block in each row. Remember, if you want to find the address of any block within that row, you have to offset from this address. So if I wanted uh, memory location eight, I'll have to go to the first row and then add eight to the first number there. So it's going to be address zero eight. If I want to find memory address 34, well, I'll have to go to the third row. So 32 and then the first one is 32. Then the next one is 31, three, and then the next one is 34. So th it's going to be there. All right. So that's basically what my memory looked like with some empty, empty and some use bytes. And now we want to do some dynamic memory allocation. So I say I have some type and it's a pointer and I'm going to give it an identifier. I'm going to call the malloc function, which is provided by C. And I'm going to say, Hey, I want you to allocate some memory for me. And I have to tell it how many bytes I want. So malloc just deals in bytes. 
But the safest and best way for you to get the amount of memory you want is to use the size of, size of operator in C to say, I want the size of some type times how many things I want. Now, this might seem confusing if you have never done this before. So if I know I wanted 16 bytes, I could just type 16. On the other hand, if I know I want four integers, I could say, what is the size of an int in, on this machine or this architecture? And then I want four because on a very small machine, an int might be just two bytes. And so if I just say I want 16 all the time on that small machine, I'm just wasting space. And so on another machine, a server or something, an int might be eight bytes. And so if I only answer 16, I would never get enough. So the safest way to do it is to say size of type, and then depending on the machine it's compiling on, it's going to do the right thing times how many elements I want. So if we look at an example there, um, so if I want to do int, you know, pointer, AR is, so basically you can read that backwards sort of. So AR is a pointer to int, and remember, malloc only return one value, which is the address, and the address is a number, as we can see from that left column. Um, and so... I'm going to say AR is equals to whatever value malloc returns to me. And if there's no memory, malloc is not going to return anything, but we're going to pretend there, since we're looking at our memory and we see some free space, that we have enough. And I'm going to say malloc size of int times 4. And let's imagine that size of int is 4 bytes. So that would be 4 times 4, which is a 16. Now, if I knew it was 16 that I wanted, I could just ask for 16. But remember I said, the safest thing to do is to say size of type times how many elements you want. If you always write that in your code, you're never going to run into the issues with with not having enough size. But let's skip over that for now. And so now, let's just pretend in this example that the MAC function went into memory and found uh, 16 bytes in a row, at least, and it returns many addresses to it. And it says, hey, there's 16 bytes unused here at in, in the third row. And so it says, hey, the address there is hexadecimal 20 or the decimal value 32. So from memory location 32, I guarantee you that nobody else is using or should be using I guarantee that at least I haven't allocated that memory to anybody else. The 16 bytes starting from there. <laughs> Whether somebody else is using it or not is a totally different thing. And we can get into that and we're going to see how that's very easy to do when we look at a code example. And so at least Mark is coming back and saying, these 16 bytes are yours to use. I haven't given anyone else access or given them a point or not access. Take back access. I haven't given them allocated any of the 16 bytes in that third row to anyone else. So go ahead and that's yours. All right, so now you have your 16 bytes. What then? Uh, how is this an array? Well, um, if you want to get to the sixth element in that array, well, you could use it like um, in that block of memory. You can use array notation. So you can say my CA, square bracket 5, in this example here, we have allocated 16 bytes of character. So now we have 16 bytes, and we want to get to the sixth byte. So I can say CA, character array, um, offset 5, uh, or index 5, and that means go to the sixth elements, because we're doing zero base, right? Um, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's the sixth element in my array. Another way of doing this is to say, I want to add 5 to CA, because remember, CA represents the first element in that array, or block of memory that I've allocated. So if I plus add 0 to it, it's the very same one. If I add 1, it's the very next one, blah, 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 blah. So if I add 5, it takes me to the sixth element. And then now I can do references because now I have the address of that sixth element. I can dereference it because it's a pointer. So this is where C allow you to do pointer arithmetic. When it says when you have a pointer, you can add and subtract from that pointer. Okay? And so <laughs> that's what I've done. I've done addition on a pointer. But remember, pointer is just a number. It's a fancy type of number, but it's a number anyway. And we'll see why I said fancy type of number. And so I've added 5 to, you know, 0x20, and so um, now I've gone to 25. And so at that point, now when I dereference that memory location, whether to read something from there or write something there, I'm talking about the sixth um, element. But then there's yet another way to do it. Since I could do pointer arithmetic, I can store that result. So I can do my pointer arithmetic, store it in yet another variable, which is also going to be a character pointer. And we're going to see it later on. You could, well, not in this section, but later on, you could store, maybe to cover pointer, you could store this in anything else. And at that point, you can just go crazy. And you probably do sometime. And then I can just dereference it. Because if I just dereference Z at this point, it's already pointing to that location. So dereferencing it is just saying, hey, give me the thing right here. And of course, I can do pointer arithmetic again and say, well, add zero and then dereference, which is exactly the same thing. I'm just right here already. Z is pointing to the element I want. And of course, I could use array indexing notation. And so C gives you, like I say, 
multiple ways of doing things before. I've said this, that C is one of those languages that just, and it's, you know, people refer to C as a language that give you a gun to shoot yourself in the foot. And not only does it give you a gun to shoot yourself in your foot, but it gives you multiple ways of shooting yourself in the foot. Now, silly story. I love this show called Naked and Afraid. Um, it's a show on Discovery Channel here in the United States. And it's about taking people and putting them out in very dangerous situation, out in nature, um, where there's no civilization, and maybe it's cool, it gets too hot, or something like that, and there are you know, dangerous animals around and so on, snakes and scorpions and blah, 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 blah. And you have to be a survivalist expert to try and figure out how to survive for 21 days in these very hard conditions. Uh, whether they're trying to find fresh water, trying to start a fire with rain and all this other stuff coming down, and blah, 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 trying to build a shelter and so on. And one of the things is that you wouldn't want to pluck somebody like me who's not a survivalist expert and put me in that situation um, because I don't know anything about really trying to survive and trying to build a fire from scratch. And so the people who sign up for the show are usually people who either want to challenge themselves, believe they can do it, or they're actually survivalist experts. Now, why am I telling you this? This is what it's like programming C. You do not want to jump into C programming just like how you don't want to jump into Naked and Afraid as a participant unless you've been trained or you're an expert and you know what you're doing. Because otherwise so that you're going to go and give up. And a lot of people who have trained in on this show sometimes just give up. And so there's just danger at every corner. Something trying to bite you, steal you, sting you, kill you. In C, it's sort of like the same thing. Program in C, at every corner, there's a pitfall. And so um, if you're not careful, you can write very bad code very quickly. So enough of the talking. I just wanted to get that in your mind that C is a very powerful language and with great power come great responsibility. And so um, it is not for everyone. And certainly if you want to program in language, you should learn the tricks of the trade and got to be comfortable with pointers. Um, they're plus or minus to doing all this stuff at a very low level. All right, let's continue. So that was a character. So here now let's deal with integer. So let's say I allocate an integer um, pointer and I ask Malik to say, hey, size of int times four, like we were talking about when we first started this. And it went back in memory and gave me the same four blocks. And we're going to pretend that this is before I ask for the int for the characters, right? Because it's not going to give me the same location because remember, it's already give that out. But let's just start over. Okay, let's say that location is free. And so we're dealing with that location now. And so it give me um, the memory location starting at 0x20 or 32, byte like 32. And it says from here on is 16 bytes. All yours for your four integers that you want. Because remember, size of operator knows that an int is, in our example, four bytes. So times four, 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 16, so it gives me four, 16 bytes. Now I want the third element of my integer array. Well, remember we're doing zero based counting. So I'm still gonna access this second array and I'm gonna say zero is the first element, one is the second integer, two is the third integer. What is C really doing then? Well, if I do use that pointer IA, which is the pointer to int, C is smart enough to know that when I do plus zero, well, of course that means don't change, but plus one, it doesn't add one, the number one, to my pointer address 20. It says, oh, this pointer is of type int. The size of an int is four. So when you say plus one, he really means add four. If that takes a while to sink in or that doesn't make sense and you have to shake your head, yeah, that's what it does. So it is really clever. So when I say add two, it's really adding eight bytes. So the value eight, so it adds eight to, eight to my number 0x20, so I have 0x24, and that is the offset now to, correctly, to my third integer, right? To my third integer in this array. Because remember, I'm doing um, zero base, right? So it's a third element, but it's at index two, right? Because we're doing zero base um, thing. So when I get the third one, I have to use two. And so, again, we can do the same thing of doing that calculation of IA plus two, stored in Z, and since Z is pointing to the address 0x28, I can just dereference Z, or I could say Z plus zero to reference, which is the same exact same thing. Or I could use array index notation and just say Z of zero. And from there on, I can actually do Z of one and get to the one after that, which would be my fourth element or the last one in my array. Now, if I did Z two, guess what? I get to another one after that. C doesn't check. That's where the complication come in because once you have a pointer to memory, you can pretty much go walking all over memory. So that's a different discussion. We're not talking about that though, but I just wanted to show you that C does the right thing. Given the right pointer, uh, when you try to do pointer arithmetic, addition and subtraction, it does the right thing. Okay. I told you it's going to be a lot. So before we jump into the code, pointers and uh, printing an array in, in C, not built in. No way to do it. We'll see. Length calculation, size of on an array, 
but don't use it on a pointer. Got to be careful though. Um, basic usage is basically array index, right? Which is the square bracket and a number, or that's the easiest way to go. Or you can do the calculation yourself, which is array plus some integer value, do the pointer arithmetic, and then dereference. Um, there are times when you want to do stuff like that for whatever reason, you might want to make the dereference and stuff explicit. Um, and assignment is just, you know, array notation equal. You could do pointer notation too, you know, dereference. You could do that. You can remember the two are the same. And then retrieval is exactly what you think. Um, no splitting, like I said. Can I take an array and then split it in two? Because what C is doing is really going into memory, you ask it for malloc, and then saying, okay, I find a run or a free block of the amount of memory you want, and I return your pointer to it. To, to split that, it doesn't go back and do anything fancy. <laughs> you All you can do is reallocate to grow that, which is, you know, how we grow an um, thing. But, and joining, you really, joining is no built-in operation. You're actually going to grow the one array big enough to accommodate the second array, and you got to copy the things in. Doesn't have any automatic things there. So, uh, it's sort of possible to grow and join stuff, but you have to do the hard work. It's going to make an existing array bigger if there's space there. Um, and the reason why is because, or it might reallocate somewhere else and copy the data in for you, um, if it's available. Um, so these things are a little bit tricky. So definitely want to, um, you want to be careful, very careful here. All right. So let's jump in with some code and start playing a little bit. Enough talking. If you don't know C, you'll be bored by now. Okay. So let me just show you some things. So let's take a look at some code. But before I look at the code, I want to show you something. So um, if you go to c++reference.com, you'll enter this page, c++reference.com. And by default, it's showing you reference for C++. But if we scroll down, we'll see here C reference. And specifically, um, I want to go to headers. Because remember, I said that um, C puts um, its function prototypes and types. So function prototype, type declaration, and um, any value might need to use um, in header files. So for example, we saw complex that age we wanted to deal with complex numbers. So I'm going to do a search here for array. Okay. And there's no error um, having to do with either manipulating arrays or any of that sort of thing. So it's nothing. The one that we've been using is input and output at stdio.h for input and output. And here too, if we do a search for array, right? We can see size needed for an array of character to all the longest supported file name. So that's a constant. So again, header files have constants, you know, and types defined, right? Type defined and macros, um, which are just how you define constants in C. Um, but yeah, um, nothing here about um, how to manipulate an array. Just saying that oh, here's this thing that defines the longest size for um, file name and so on. The other thing is that is in this file um, the um, stdio.h are definition or the um, prototype, function prototype for different type of functions and for formatted input output we've been using to print and out for printing out um, things, values and text and so on to the screen. And as you can see here, um, there are the different signatures for the printf function. Okay. And again, if we look here at the format specifiers, remember how printf work is we provide a format and then the values that um, gets printed in that format with the format specifier string, right? Correct. So, um, and strings in C, we talk about C doesn't have, well, we haven't that with it yet, actually. Okay. Um, that's going to be the next chapter. Well, future chapter, we talk about strings. In C, we don't have, actually have a string type, we have a character pointer. And we're going to see a little bit of that today. But anyway, if we go down, we look at the format specifiers, we can see that if you want to print out the actual percent, you do that, a single character, a character string, a signed integer, unsigned integer, blah, 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 blah but nothing, full point number, and a pointer, but nothing about actually um, an array itself. You could say a string of character is an array, but that's the only thing that you get um, automatic printing for is a array of strings, a array of characters array, right? Which is how C treats a string. It's a null terminated character array. All right, so that there is me showing you that how um, C++ doesn't have any sort of in built built-in capability for manipulating arrays really and for printing out arrays. So you're out of luck there. But we, we have ways we can get around that. Um, the other thing I want to show you is this. So if we go to language and we go to the main function and we look at the different ways in which the other main function could be defined, you can see it's always should return an int, and that int, the return value, is the value zero represents exit success, program terminates successfully, or exit failure indicate that how um, you know there was an error. 
And a non-zero value is all you need to indicate that there was an error. It could be one, two, depending on how you want to define it, or whoever's going to check the exit value. We're not going to worry talk about that much now, or ever really, until we do like a C course or something. Um, and then um, there's this definition here, um, or this stick function signature. And you can see it says int arg argc, and then character pointer da da da, argv and things. So what you're saying is, like I said before, the way you do a array declaration in C um, is you say, identifier array and then you have the type so we can see the type of this array or the things that are stored in this array are of this type which are character pointers so we actually have an array right so it is an array so argvz is an array and you can read it argv is an array of pointers to characters and here's a little cheat uh, if you ever see a c declaration that you don't understand copy it and then add over to c del cdeclaration.org right so cdecl.org and you can just pin it, paste it in here. You could paste in something in English or the C definition, and then it tells you in English. If you paste in, type in English, it tell you how to define it. Okay. So, um, and then if, of course, if you knew what you wanted to do, and you type that in, it can give you what the declaration should look like. So, kind of a little cheat, um, something nice for if you see some crazy C++ declaration that you don't really understand. Um, so, something like, like this that might need... Um, Interpreting if you have status in a file somewhere or some code, you could come paste it in here and it will tell you what it is. All right. So, so, so that's besides what we want to do. So I want to focus on this here and I want to, um, look and see with this argument. So this is ARGC is a non-negative value representing the number of arguments passed to the program from the environment in which the program is run. ARGV pointed to an array of pointers to null terminated multi-byte strings that represent the argument passed to the program from the executed environment. ARG zero through ARG C minus one. So one less than thing because we come to my zero. And then the value of ARG C C is, which means the last, the element beyond the last valid argument is guaranteed to be zero. And C treat zero and null as the same thing. That's important for us. But let's go, let's go right to our C program and we're going to use um, this version. Um, right. So from here, and I don't have anything in chapter six. So I'm doing MK CD, MK directory CD. Uh, let's do chapter six, section zero one. How are we doing C? And then we're gonna do our code editor, of course, Visual Studio Code. And that's up. And we're gonna do main let's see. And then we're gonna do include stdio.h. And then we're gonna do int main and an integer argc, arg number of argument count, character pointer to argv, and it's an array. All right. And so this would print f. Um, Chapter 06, you know, chapter chapter 06, section 01. Um, uh, let's just let's keep it simple. Arrays in C, okay? And new line, that, that. And so what do we do? We can return exit success or just zero, okay? So let's uh, let's let that save. I'm going to say don't show this again, uh, whatever that is. And uh, run and what? Exit success. Uh, uh, that's supposed to be defined in standard out that maybe it's in standard um, std that h instead std lib sorry so we're not going to worry about it we're going to do zero and here we go our program runs and we're fine but what is the value um how many arguments are being passed to our program right now so we can do um print f um info let's say argc is equals to percent d new line and let's just do argc Right. What is the value of ARGC? And let that save run again. And we see one. So the number of arguments passed is one. What is that argument? Well, PRNTF print. Um, uh, let me do it this way. I'm pushing down stuff actually. Printf uh, info ARGC argument zero, right, is equal to percent s because we know that if we have ARGV, here and we in it's an array so we can certainly do some indexing so we index that first element or any element in this array that element is going to be not a character but a pointer to some characters and we haven't talked yet about how c treats what is a pointer to a character but we're gonna we know that our percent s allow you to print a pointer of characters and it already told us from the documentation we read just now that it's a pointer to a multi-byte string um null terminated so we're fine we don't really have to understand it we just have to know that our Pointer to characters in each element of this array, and we can use percent s to print it out. And so we go with that. So argv. 
uh, zero. All right, and let's print it out and see. It's been oh, let's let this say first of all, and then I run this, and you can see um, argv is equals to this very long name here, and it's actually the program that's being run. So I know that because I can start fire up a terminal here, and if I ls, I'll see that executable there, and I can do main and just run it, and now you can see this is the pat the the actual um, what we should say command I've used to run the program. And that's why before, when I ran it from here, it had that very long name because that's how it's being run from um, Visual Studio Editor. But when I invoke it directly, well, it's just this. And I can pass some argument to my program. I can say RGV1, okay, arg1, let's call it arg1, arg2, and arg3. And then each one of those is a string because it told us it's a string, all right? And if I run it, um, it's telling me that I have four arguments. One is this, and then the three arguments I pass, remember, Argument zero is always the name of your program. And of course I could pass, you know, this is very cool. And that string is gonna be one argument. So notice, um, just fine. All right, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. I just want to show you that be, what's passed to your main program is actually, you can get some arguments. And there, there are others. Um, if you go back here and look at this, um, you can see it all. There's this version that has other parameters and other parameters are implementation defined you know, list of strings also. And so um, we can see what other parameters are being passed to our program. Uh, let me just put this back on screen by going here and then saying, comma, char pointed to env is I know is the next one. And so um, I can print that out. And remember what it says. It says for this, the very last one is guaranteed to be null. That's the exact same thing with the environments one. The very last um, element in this array is null. Not a, the last valid element here, we already know it's always five, but then the sixth one would be null, but that, that means that that's the end, there's no more, okay? So we can use that fact to iterate over env. So for i int i equals zero, and I want to do something that's very strange, is gonna be env, env of i, and then i plus plus, and without explaining a whole lot, what I'm really doing is saying, I want you to create a variable called i equals to zero, and i is gonna be evaluated to this for loop only, not after. And because force i is gonna be set to zero, e and v of zero, check, check that. And it, remember it says if the last one is going to be zero. So if the value here is zero, then I know I'm at n, do not go in. Do not go execute the, the body of this for loop. But if it's not zero, then I want you to execute this for loop or print it out in other words. In this case, I'm gonna do print f. And I'm gonna do info um, arg env um, of percent d is equals to percent s, because it's a string, uh, printed each on a new line. And then I'm gonna do i, and then I'm gonna do env of i, because um, that's how we access an array, index it. And so um, now, when I loop over this, this is actually gonna loop over everything in this array um, and then when we reach the last one, because the, whatever the last one is, it's going to be zero, it's going to stop and not go in the loop. And here's where I increment this value after at the end. We didn't really talk about loops in C, so this doesn't make sense, just accept it on fate. So now I'm going to just run this. And when I run it, as you can see, there are 73 arguments being passed, environmental variables being passed to my program. I won't have to worry about it. The last one being actually the same path of my program. But then there are a whole bunch of other things that's defined in my environment. And when you run this, different things are going to be defined in your environment. You know, what I like for my editor, what value I like for less, and so on. So, 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 um, when you run it, you can see different things. All right. So what about what we really want to talk about? How do you declare, um, arrays in C? So we talk about, you know, if I have a character and I say character array, let's call it CA. Um, is an array of, you know, let's do five elements is equals to, and uh, let's say I, I won't, I'm not going to initialize it. Okay, so here I'm going to change this for loop. Well, all right, let me just reuse it. I'm going to say for i, i less than five. Okay, this is how many elements in this array. And I'm going to say ca of that, that, and then ca. Okay, and so now it should print out the number of the, the values of those things in that array. And so I run it. Okay, you know what? This is just way too much information being printed, so I'm going to comment out this, but I'll still leave it in there for you guys to have it. Okay, let's save. I'm going to run it. And so you can see 
um, my characters, I have null characters because zero is the null character and this thing is empty. Now, if I put, you know, 45, 67, whatever, 77, 60, oh, okay, 49, 51, okay. Um, and this is where I was talking about you could put less. And so even though I specify, notice how it initialized all of them to zero. And then I can just run again. Ah, wait a second. Um, so now, oh, I'm trying to bring this out as a character string. No. Um, this is a character, so I have to print it out like this. Should have warned me about that before. But anyway, um, maybe I didn't see the warning. But um, what else? Did I, oh, yeah, I tried to print out. Uh, so this is the reason why it failed here is because it tried to print out a um, no, term, uh, character array. It found one of my arrays, it went and tried to go from there looking for the next null character to terminate that string and didn't find it. Again, this is not going to make sense until we talk about strings. But you can see, so my 45 there actually is the minus character. 77 is the M character, 49 is the 1 character, and 51 is the 3 character, and then um, when I try to print out 0 as a character, it's just garbage, basically. All right, um, so what else can we do? We can try and put more things than 5 in there, and 97, and whatever, 40, and that's 0. But then my size of my array is only, um, I said it should be only 5, right? So when I run this, I get a warning telling me that I have more things in my array than the size specify. So in that case, what I want to do is probably have C calculate the size for me. And then now, when I run it, I won't print out 5 because I've specified 5 here. So I said that oh, C really does truly have the idea of an array, and you could use size of to determine the size of an array. And I'm going to show you that now. So what I'm going to do is use size of to calculate the size of an array. So I'm going to say size of, and I'm going to say CA. So I want to do I less than the size of CA, all right? And so C, size of this array should tell me that how I have how many things in here. I don't even know. Um, all right. It should calculate that size to me and print out all the elements of my array. So if I want to print out a character, I can also print it out as a number, decimal, right? So uh, let's hit save. And then I run. And there we go. It works. Okay. So it's showing you that size of can correctly determine the size of my array. See, so understand array. All right, what is going to be surprising is if I change this to int, okay? Now, things are going to potentially blow up. Let me let that save and run it. And now, notice how many um, elements, in, integers I have. Only about, so that's 5 and 4, 9. But yet, this is showing me at all is doing 36, because remember, it starts from 0, right? So 0 to um, 35 is 36. So how is it that I'm end up with 36? Well, 4 times 9 is what? 36, right? Well, that's because what size of is giving me is how many bytes are in my array. So it's not how many elements in my array. It happened to work when the, my array was actually character, okay? But it doesn't work so well once my array is, so let's just call this array, once my array is anything other than character. So what I need to really do is to make size of do proper calculation and use it correctly. That's why I said it's kind of tricky. So it's how many bytes divided by, divided by the size of one element of that array. So a little confusing here. But basically, calculate the total number of bytes in my array R, and then divide that number of bytes by the number of bytes per element. And this is the correct way to use size of. And so now when I run, you're going to see I'm going to actually go loop over that thing from 0 to 8, which is the 9 times. So I run it, and now it, I, I'm, it's correct, okay? And notice how once I had a pointer to an array, how I was able to go all the way to 35, C doesn't care. And that's what I mentioned earlier, is that once you have a pointer, you can go all over memory. And just like I was reading from memory, I could have written over memory. And that's why programming in C is so troublesome, because somebody get a pointer, and if they're not careful, they can just do a uh, whole, make a, a mess of things, all right? And so um, usually people put this in a, um, this definition, I'm going to copy it and put it in a macro using, um, so use define, and so you define a macro, and we can say um, array length, for example, and then I'll say, I take in some array, and you have to be very careful how you define this, because macros, the way they expand and so on could be a problem, so I want to enclose the thing that I get in another parentheses, and this is because other things can be next to it, how the macro is used, and so you, uh, when it expands, because C plus is literally just putting the expansion in place, and so um, you don't <laughs> you don't want to have a headache as a result of how it's expanded. So um, I'm going to enclose everything at the, the the area that's point passed in here, or the thing that I want to um, calculate the size of, 
this way. Now, because I'm using size of size, this can work on anything, you know, correct it, anything that's um, a pointer or a type or whatever. So, um, but this one is specifically for calculating. And I remember I can use size of on a type and get how many bytes are used for that type. I'm using it on an array and see how big that array is. But remember, I need a true array. Like if I use it on a pointer, I'm gonna get a very different thing because the pointer is a type and not an array. It could be used like an array because of low pointer arithmetic. The automatic conversion that I show you when you use, you take a pointer and you can use it like an array and back and forth. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, so now I can replace this mess with just saying I want to calculate the length of an array, which happens to be AR. And so it's actually going to take this old mess and just stick it back right in play here and replace it with AR. But at least I don't have to think about it and keep rewriting this over and over. Once I do this once and text, test it, I'm good. So I can rerun my code and I'm going to get the same exact result. You probably can't tell that it run, but it, it run. It blinked for a second there just now. All right. So what is this idea about um, in C++ pointers and arrays get collapsed or pointers get collapsed to array? So let's go back here. And you can see it tells you at all for the signature for main, you can also use pointer to pointer. Well, here's telling you at all, I can really say at all ARGV is an array whose element are pointer. And now it's telling me at all ARGV can actually just be a pointer of pointers. And that is, I'm going to show you some um, charts to show you how, what really you're saying here, when you say, when, if, if I have this, when I have AR is an array of integer, I'm saying each element is an integer. When I put this here, I'm saying that our, each element is a pointer to an integer. Well, if each element is a pointer to an integer, then in other words, um, let's do this. Um, let's do, let's just do two, simple. I'm going to say I have AR is a two element array of pointers to integer. What that really means is that AR of zero is a pointer to an integer. I remember what we said about pointer to an integer. You can use malloc to allocate it, right? So I'm not going to use malloc just not right now. What I'm going to do is I'm create two other integers. So I'm going to say integer array. Uh, let's call it ARI array one or ARI array zero, for example, is an array and it contains one, two, three, four, five. Okay, elements. Five elements. And then I'm going to say int I array one is an array. I uh, would contain six, no, seven, eight, six, whatever. My fingers are doing different things than what my mind I'm saying. My mouth wants to say, my mind wants to say. All right. So now I could say AR zero, the first element of this array here has, has pointers as each element. Well, since I A zero is an array of integer, I told you how C plus plus can take an array and collapse it to a pointer. So I'm actually just going to say I is AR of zero is I A zero. Does that make sense? AR of one is equals to I A one. So now I'm taking an array and storing it into another array, but in each location of that array really expects a pointer. But this is not pointer, but C allows me to do this. And I'll show you further. Look, so if I do um, print f uh, info a, um, IA of zero size, you know, uh, is percent D backslash new line and is size of, well, we gotta do the proper thing, right? Array length of IA zero, right? So let's do that, that. And then IA1, and then IA1. So we know the length of that. What about AR? What's the size of AR? So AR. And so let's let that save, run that. And you can see, oh, wait a second. What does it complain about? Expansion from macro, da da da. Um, oh, wait a second. I have some warning up here. Okay. Um, so it's just telling me basically I should use long U for on site U when I have a size of. Um, so that's fine. Uh, no complaint there. Um, what's the other thing? Let me let that save run. Okay. Um, warning, last warning for my special type in, but the argument has to type in pointer. Um, oh, that's because I'm trying to point, point print out AR as decimal, but remember it's a pointer to int. So, um, what I really want to do is loop over each element of AR and then do another for loop. Right, because now each element of AR is a pointer. So I do for int y or we want, to, but let's say j is equal to zero. Uh, j less than. This is where things are going to get messy because what size of array? Well, if I try to calculate the array length um, using AR of i, this is not going to work. J plus plus. 
this is not going to work like you expect. And the reason why is because once I store this array as a pointer, I lose all information about its size. So size of, so at this point, size of is really doing size of on a pointer. And how much, the, how many bytes you need for a pointer? Well, we can get back to that in a minute. But we'll see what's being printed out here. So we can say i is equals to that, a of i is equals to that, and that's going to be a pointer, because that's pointer to an array. And then we're going to say that um, j is equals to this, and then ar of i of j. And this is multiple indexing. All right, so you call this a multiple dimension array. The reason why is ar of i is going to be one of these two guys. And then, depending on which one, then of j, is going to now give you the specific element in that particular array. Does that make sense? A little confusing. A lot here. Like I said, this is going to be a long chapter. So J is equals to percent D, and then um, um, AR of I of J is the exact same thing. Um, AR of I uh, of J is the exact same thing as, um, well, I, I don't know which one of the array we we're talking about so i can't really say if it's ar a i i a zero or i a one a lot sorry for all the confusion this is a bit all right um so let's let's run it and i run it and you can see now that when i run this okay one of my array is five elements the other one is three and two and this is all um adds up but then look at this why is it for each array i'm only printing out two elements well the reason why is because when I try to calculate here what the range of J is, which should really be the range across each one of these arrays, well, like I said, it's really just calculating, if you look at our definition, is what's the size of the thing that I'm passing in, which in this case is going to be an element of AR, which is a pointer to an int. So what's the point size of a pointer to an int? The size of a pointer to an int is um, 8 bytes. And then was the size of an int, was the first element to that, is an int, right? Because if I have a pointer to an int, the size to an element of that is an int. So the size of an int is 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and hence why j is only ranging from 0 to 1, because it's doing from 0 to less than 2. So um, how do I know that how the size of an int is 2? Well, um, let's comment out some of this guy here, and so we don't have too much on the stream, screen, and I'll show you that. So if I do int, um, if I do actually character pointer cp is equal to zero. I'll initialize it to zero. Int, um, let's see, short int, short int, short pointer, um, short pointer, short integer pointer is equal to zero too. I'm just initializing it to whatever I want. Um, int pointer ip is equal to zero, right? I could leave them and don't give them a value. Like I could do long pointer um, lp and then that's it. And I could do... Um, printf um, info um, cp is equals to percent um, so size of cp is equals to percent d right along u um, because it's unsigned integer and um, I'm, I don't want to print out the value of each pointer but okay let's do it percent so cp is equals to percent p was the value of a pointer and then new line and then I'm gonna do cp the size of cp and then cb so print out the thing. All right, and then uh, let's copy this four times, I think. Okay, so I have this. Actually, I like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then the next one is SIP. Then highlight that, put Command D, Command D on my computer, IP. I like this, Command D, Command D, Command D, and then it's LP. All right, so now when I print run this, it should show me that the size of each one of these pointer, a pointer is just how much, how many bytes do you need to be able to store an address because that's what a pointer is. From our previous discussion, we said, oh, we have a mem we have memory, and when we create a pointer, we're just simply saying, give me the address of a location in memory. So regardless of where that address is in memory, the size of it is going to be the same, okay? Uh, because you need a pointer, that, um, a value, you need a, a type that has enough bytes to store the address of that thing. So my machine, it's a 64-bit machine, so I'm expecting this to be size of any pointer to be 8 bytes. Regardless of the pointer to an integer or pointer to a character, it doesn't matter the thing it's pointing to, is that the pointer itself needs to be big enough. And so all pointers are going to have the same size, regardless of what you're pointing to. And so let's run this and see. And so that's what you see here, 8. The size of any one of these pointers is going to be 8 bytes on my machine. On yours, if you're running 32 bits, it's going to be 4. If you're on a 16-bit architecture, it will be 2 bytes, right? So um, if you're on a much larger machine, it might be more. Then um, those are the value. 
And so I'm surprised that LP here is zero because it usually doesn't get initialized. It's usually just gonna be whatever is in memory. Okay, so don't get too excited. You see this is zero. You run to your computer, LP here, the value of LP might be something else. All right, because C does not initialize variables unless like when you use an initialization list. Okay, all right, good. So, um, so that was a little quick run over of how you use arrays in C. Now, um, we initialize it, but we didn't really get around to assigning things to an array and stuff. So I need to use malloc. So in order to use malloc, I'm going to include std, std lib.h, yeah, lib.h. No, I don't really need this because if I allocate, uh, if I do a, so let's do this. If I do an array, so let's just do integer array. So i a is, um, let's say, 10 element array. So tell him I'm sorry. Um, can so now I can start. So I'm saying that I want a 10 element array. And remember, since it's an array, I can do size of to get the, the length of it, right? So I can do four. Um, you know, i int i equals zero, i less than array length of i a i plus plus. And then I can do print f, and then I could say, you know, i a of um, percent D is equals to percent uh, D new line and then I could say I and then I of I all right so nothing new that we haven't done before and this was the what are those values in there remember I told you they're not gonna be initialized so it might all be zero or it might be something else who knows okay and as you can see some of them are zero and then some of them have non-zero values so don't count on that but now that I have my array um, and this allocates an array okay it's not one where I, I tell it just what the element should be. Now I can assign values in there and I could say IA of zero. Remember that's how we were accessing it to get the value and iterating over it. We could store things in it is equals to, equals to five, for example, right? And I could use dereference pointer syntax. I can say dereference IA plus three and assign it to 17. And what I'm saying is take I add three to it. And this is the fourth element, right? Because zero, one, two, three. And we sh I showed you in the slides that what it means is C is smart enough because it knows the type of IA is pointer to int. It's an integer array. So when I say treat this like a pointer, so when I use it like this, it's saying, oh, take the address of this array and then add three to it. I see in any other language, this wouldn't make any sense. Because you're saying take the array and add three to it. No, this is take the array, read its address, and then add three to it. And that's going to be that, 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 that here. Well, the food, this guy uh, here. And then in this location, do you reference that? No, this is just a memory location, right? Okay, this is a memory location plus three memory location. And then um, do you reference it and assign 317 to it? And so now when I run, you can see this memory location gets as three and this has five. So either way, you can index into an array either using the index um, operator with the square brackets or using array um, pointer at arithmetic. There's sometimes you might want to do this when you have multiple dimensional array and they're um, different. But for the most part, you should just make your life easier by just sticking to IA, you know, three, and that's going to work just as fine for getting into it. Again, for multiple dimensional array that are unbalanced, you might, you'll have to do other weird things. Like the one where we had before here, these arrays unbalanced. So I would need to, when I get to this, the, the first array, you know, I need to do it by five. Or when I get to the next one, I need to do it by two, blah, blah, blah. But that's a little bit more complicated. All right. Um, so what else is there? Well, I mentioned that oh, these are actually multi-dimensional array. Well, I also mentioned, oh, before we move on, I'm talking about malloc here. So let's, um, let's do that. So I'm going to move up and I'm going to come on top of this right now. So let's come to this and I, I can do the same thing. I can get IA to be an array that stores 10 elements by saying this is a pointer. I is a pointer to an, um, integer and then say malloc and by, a good program person said I should cast the return value of malloc because malloc return a void pointer. We're not going to get into that. It's going to work. C is not going to complain. So remember what I want. I want 10 elements of integers, right? So 10 times size of int. That's what I want um, malloc to do is give me enough bytes so that I can store 10 integers. And that's the best way to do it as opposed to me going 40 or something. And if you run this on any machine, depending on what the size of integer is going to do the right thing. And I know that I have that, I can still store my values in it. Notice I have a pointer. Now I'm treating it like an array. And that's what I talk about with C plus. It doesn't really care. Um, the thing to be careful of though, 
is no, remember, this is a pointer. So Malik returned me one value, which is a pointer to memory. What is size of of that location? Eight. Well, when I do linked, so size of of that value is eight divided by size of, of the thing stored there, one of those elements is int. So this is always going to be two. So this is never going to print out the right thing for me. Um, what is it complaining about? Uh, da, 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 incompatible, da, 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 um, convert from endpoint with expression of int. Where, why is it get saying, oh, malloc. There you go, malloc. Um, so I didn't write the function name properly. All right, so we'll run it now, bam. And so now, as you could see, um, wherever it went in memory and look for some values, there's just some junk in there already at some of these other locations that I didn't initialize. But notice it's only printing out two things. It's not printing out the thin things. So for me, I need to, in that case, what I would do is I'll define something like this. B E F I have defined array, my array, or something. My array um, length is equals to, uh, my array length is 10, that equals. And then now I can use this over and over without having to think about it. So I can say this, and then I can say this here. And so now, when I run this, this works just fine. Okay, so you can see the 5 and the 17. And notice how memory location 1 has a totally different value. And if they run this, depending on where it's finding, putting it in memory, it might have different values. Or we could, of course, print out what that memory location is that we're getting. And so I could say um, printf um, info um, address of IA is equals to percent %p, and then new line, and then IA. And that's going to show me... Um, where let's save it, run it, and it roll up. There's the address there this time. We run it again. The address, oh, it looked like it wasn't the address, but the values there, depending on how that is being used, it's changing. All right. So that's how I can allocate memory. Now you notice that how I allocated some memory here and I never deallocated. Well, rightly, what I'm supposed to do is after I'm finished with it, I'm supposed to free it. And so I'm supposed to type free and IA, which is appointed to the memory. Now if I know what the value is, I could have just typed that value, whatever. It doesn't care. She really doesn't care. But um, the reason why my program wouldn't die, no matter how many times I run it, if I don't free it, is because my program is terminating after it's finished doing this, and the operating system has cleaned up that memory for me. But if I had a program that was long running, and I just keep allocating memory and never freeing it, then I would run out of memory, because each program only has so much memory that it can use while running. So, uh, so technically, I don't have to do it in this program, because this program is simple and just terminate quickly. But you always want to marry your malloc with your free, and you don't want to, you want to free the thing you dealloc. You allocate. So, for example, if I try to do free plus one, because there's some housekeeping associated with this thing, I would be causing a, a havoc in the system. So, I definitely don't want to do that. So, um, and I could store this. I don't have to use the same variable. I can use some other variable z, for example. If I say int pointer to um, z is a pointer to integer, and it also has the same exact value as ia, then I can use that to, to free it. Free and doesn't care which how you pass in that value of where in memory to free it. C is not checking that. What C cares about is the value that you, the memory location that you say that you should free. That's what it cares about, not who is passing at that value, if that makes any sense. Now, uh, one of the other places where you see that this collapse in um, from array to pointer, and I'm not going to use this because, again, I said oh, this can easily change to this, and it works equally the same. So feel free to use either one. Um, but let's do this. Let's um, do a prototype for a function. We can call it void print array. And we'll do it more to C style, print array. And then I'm going to say this takes um, um, integer array. And um, I'm going to say AR is an array. And this is my function signature. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to, let's just um, stay right here and implement it. Okay. So I'm going to implement my function here. And so um, how do I want this to work? Well, ideally, I want this to be able to do this. So my thing to print an array. Um, I ideally wanted to be able to do what? Use array length, right? To calculate whatever the length of some array that was passed in. Because really, if this is an array, if AR is an array, then array length should work well because to know how many bytes AR um, is occupying. And then based on the size of each element in AR, I should be able to print out any array correctly. Okay? So let's do that. So let's. Now that I have this array of, well, let's, if, if I, of course, if I point a, pass a pointer, it wouldn't work because there's no information about that there, right? But let's do a proper array and see if that works. So I'm going to do a proper array here. And I'm going to make, just make this five, element of five. And then, um, I'm not going to worry, print out the address of that. Oh, I need IA. Okay. And then I'm going to pass it now. I don't need free because I'm not using that. 
I'm going to do pass it to my print array function. I'm going to say print i. Okay, and that should work. Uh, what about if we do a second example? Um, let's call it ia2. And so I'm going to have a second array and I'm going to call it ia2 and it's going to be a different length. It's going to be only three. And so now um, let's run our program and see if this works. And I'm going to say that's how it's not going to work. Uh, if I run this, uh, why is it complaining now? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my thing here is using this instead of AR. Okay. All right. So I'll fix that bug and save it. Um, come on, save and run it. All right. And notice what's going on. I'm still printing only two elements from my array, even though these are true arrays in every sense of the word. Not only did I create arrays, but I also pass arrays to a function that is expecting an array. And it doesn't work. That's because of what I should told you before. Inside this function, even though I said this is an array, C sees this as a pointer. And so when I do size of, I'm taking size of at this point is eight, and then divide by how many bytes, so eight bytes for this pointer, AR, divide by how many bytes to store each one of these integer four. So that's why this is only pass print um print out two elements. Because it's seen this is just a two element pointer to two, um two things that two elements of int, and that's all. So here my array that I'm creating here, my array of five is getting squished down, collapsed to just a pointer when it's passed to the function. My array of three is just getting collapsed down to a pointer. And even though I'm using array notation here and saying that AR is an array, that information is not passed through. So everything about um, an array is a compile thing alone in C where it uses size of, it's just using compile time, the symbol table. Um, it's not something that's runtime. C doesn't have any information stored at runtime about an array. So even though it looks that way when we're doing it, it doesn't. And uh, we can see that here because each time it calls this function, it did not have any information about these two array about how big they are to, to, to tell it. What I can do if I want is I can add a second parameter to my function called int length, right? And I can use length here, the second parameter, length. And then when I call my functions here, I can say, hey, um, array length in this case is a i and then i can do the same thing here array length because these are actual arrays and so i can get their length at compile time is going to substitute it and so no this is going to work just fine ah come on um uh, blah, blah 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 um void Oh, wait a second. Oh, my um, my signature doesn't match up. So my definition. Okay, there we go. So and so that's the reason for a function signature. Make sure it matches up with the definition. And so um, run that. And now, as you can see, um, my arrays are getting printed out correctly. The first one with five element. The next one with three element. Okay. See, it start over. And so now, if I go ahead and create an um, dynamic array using malloc, and I say um, int pointer um, you know, um, let's call it dynamic array is equals to malloc. We'll see malloc. Let's just say 10. Okay. Um, actually my length was a, I, I did that. I have that already. All right. Times size of int. And then now I want to call this, I can call it with, um, I won't specify that because that's not going to work, but instead I use my length. All right. And then I say dynamic array. And if for whatever reason, um, I had initialized my array, let's say I've initialized that dynamic array. I'm gonna use this to initialize my dynamic array. My length, I'm gonna initialize it. And I'm gonna say each element of this array, the dynamic array of i is equals to i times two. So that's how I initialize it. Now, when I run it and print it, it's gonna print just fine. Um, actually, I'm gonna print, comment out these two, so it's not too much data to look at. Uh, wait till it save, run it, and now you can see um, 0 through 9, and then that's the value of my array. So my print array function works nice now when I can tell it how many things to print. All right, now I know that's a whole lot. So one last thing I want to show you, some diagram of one multidimensional array is really going happening there. And then see, you can keep going, you know, you can keep adding as many of these as you like. You can say, oh, I have an I is an array of five elements, and each element is another array of four to integer, and keep going and going and going. And the only limit is that every time you create a multidimensional array, you have to imagine that the number of bytes you're allocating is this, each array size times the size of the thing you want to store. So in this case, how many bytes are we allocating there is five times four is 20 times four, right? So 20 times four is 80 bytes for this array alone. So if we go and we do this times, you know, 100, for example, now we're doing 
100 times 80, you know, 8,000 and blah, blah, blah. So, and C would let you just keep going for as much as you would like, you know, 200. And so now that's 8,000 times 200, right? And so, um, 160,000 bytes is what you got allocated if my math is correct right there. And so, um, and so if you run this, oh, well, um, the indexing now is, is weird because, um, now I have to do sub indexing, you know, but, um, it's fine. It's, it's all legal. That's my point. Um, so, and then I could do one. Well, now you're talking about a bunch of dimensional array now, which I'm going to show you a diagram of what's going on here. Um, but anyway, when you run this, um, you see, it works fine. Um, of course, I'm telling it it's only 10 right now. So, um, things are a little bit different. Oh, I'm initializing. I'm overriding those arrays. So yeah, so I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of nonsense here when I d allocate D. So I'm, oh, well, D is, D is fine. I'm not printing out from, um, IA and stuff like that. But you could see I successfully assigned and I created this multiple, multiple dimension array. And so you just have to be careful with how much memory you allocate. All right. So let's jump back now and take a look at what's going on with multidimensional arrays. So let's take a look at this multidimensional array here. Um, so if you look at this declaration, so I have character names, um, point, well, name is an array to a pointer of character, right? So uh, as weirdos, you have to read the C declaration, but that's what I mean. It's a names is a variable, which is an array, and each element of that array is a pointer to our character. So we know from looking at our code earlier that every pointer is eight bytes. So we're saying that names is an array and each element of that array is eight bytes, which means each of these boxes here is actually eight byte because they must be capable to all the address of a character. And we know that all addressing or pointers are eight bytes, at least on my system. All right. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I have a dictionary. So I have names of people my friends or people in my family. And so each one of those names, because a name is made up of multiple characters, hence why it's an array of character for just one name. And so if I want to have multiple names, I have to have arrays of arrays, right? And so now I can imagine that in addition to my array name, which has elements who are eight bytes each to be able to hold an address or a pointer, I also have to have a number of arrays, character arrays, for each name that I want to store. So my name, my mom name, my sister name, my brother name, my blah, 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 and keep going, right? And so now when we tie it all together, I'm saying really that names index zero contains the pointer to an array of characters. So you see there are two in direction there. And we don't have to stop there. We can keep going. But this comes in useful because I can store things like um, I can have multiple um, indexes and arrays of arrays, and we call them multi-dimensional arrays, right? is that I can say, for example, names at index zero are the Jones family, names at index one are the Smith's name, and name at index two are for the, the Doe's, right? John Doe, Mary, John Doe, Jane Doe, right? And so this is an example of how you can use multidimensional array. And you can still go even further because since even in this example, we can still get to the individual characters, right? So we have three level of indirection here, even though you only need two level of indirection to print out an array because C would allow you to do that as a character, pointer to a character of arrays as a string. All right. Uh, without going too much, I just kind of want to hopefully use a picture to try and illustrate multidimensional array. And as you saw in the code, that you could have multiple, even further, five, six level, eight level deep. And the only thing that stops how far you can go is the number of bytes that the array is going to equate to. And the size is when you calculate the size of each index and then the size of the thing that you want to store. Okay. So that's it for arrays in C. Um, just a glance of it. It's much more complicated than it. Um, if your interest, your interest is piqued, then definitely learn C. Uh, if you find this crazy, then oh well, uh, <laughs> it is. What can I say? I have to admit that much. That, um, pointers and array and stuff in C is really, really complex. It takes a while to master it and through a number of examples. Okay, so follow me on Twitter. That's Traversity One on Twitter. Instagram is Traversity, and in the description you can find links to. Uh, digital currency addresses, and PayPal if you're so inclined. Other than that, enjoy the video. See you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.